Okay, in this video, I want to talk about linear word problems, uh, word problems that have to do with linear functions. And the first one I'm going to look at is a high school has an enrollment of 10,170 students in 1981 and the enrollment of 12,840 in the year 1998. What is the predicted enrollment of the high school in 2018 if we assume a linear model? Okay, so what they give us in this problem is really two different points. Um, we have the one point, which is 1981, and they have 10,170 students. And the other point we're given is 1998, and that's 12,840 students. And what they're asking is, in 2018, how many students are there? So we give us two points, and we're looking for that last point. The way I like to solve these problems, um, and you can take this advice if you like, um, I like to solve the or set the first year that they give me as year zero. And I find that the arithmetic really simplifies if I do this. That would make uh, 1998 as year 17 and 2018 as the year 37. Okay, um, So if I do that, I, I find it a little bit easier. Uh, now, I can find the slope. The slope is 12,840 minus 10,170 over, uh, and, and with that um, sub substitution, be 17 minus 0. It would be 17 in the denominator either way. Um, whoops. So we're going to get 2,670 over 17. We would get this answer either method, um, but this will be the slope. Now, again, we're looking for uh, what is uh, the enrollment of 2018, and now we need the y-intercept. But actually, we kind of already know it because this is the first enrollment that we're given. So we can say that this is the y-intercept. So y equals um, 2670 17th x plus 10170. And now we can plug in, so I'll do, um, I'll plug in the information that we need to know, and that's 2018. So I'll say f of 37 equals 2670 over 17 times 37 plus 10170, and I found that that comes to approximately, it has like a decimal there, 15981.17647, okay? And we need to round to the nearest student, so I'm going to say 15981, okay? And that would be my final answer of enrollment. So it turns out that the question was really just a line, okay? And we needed to just uh, solve for that last remaining y value. In the next example, we have a bicycle rental company. It is charging $9 for the first hour and $6.25 for each additional hour. We want to determine the maximum hours you can rent a bike if we only have $84. So um, the way that I thought of this was that the y-intercept was a 9 and that the slope was $6.25, okay? Uh, that means that y equals mx plus b can become $84 equals uh, 6.25t plus 9. And now we can solve for T. So we can subtract 9, subtract 9 there, and we get 75 equals 625 T's. We'll divide both sides by 625, 625, and we get T equals 12. Okay, so T equals 12. Well, is that the final answer? No, because it was $9.00 for the first hour, which means we already had the first hour right there. So we have to add one, so this would be 13 hours.
Okay. Another way you can do it is you can just go 84 minus 9 divided by 625 to find your answer. That's another method you can use. But if we use this um, line scenario, that's how you would do it. All right. Uh, I think we have time for another example. A gym charges $35 for a registration fee and then $26 per month. Uh, if we become a member a while ago, uh, we paid a total of $555. How many months have passed since we joined the gym? Okay, so I think that this is um, pretty clear. It's a line. Uh, we have a y-intercept of 35. We have that base fee of $35. We have a slope of $26 per month. So I can pretty easily um, come up with a line, y equals 26, I'll call it t for months, plus 35. You can call it x if you want. Well, it's we've paid $555, so we can now solve for this t, 26, t plus 35. And we subtract 35 from both sides. We have 5, 20 equals 26, t. We'll divide both sides by that 26, and we get t equals 20. So it looks like we've, uh, it's been about 20 months since we've joined that. So, yeah, almost, almost two years. Okay, in the next next example, we have a cell phone company is charging $24 monthly fee plus $13 per minute of talk time. One month, our cell phone bill was $69.50. How many minutes did we talk on the phone? It's basically the same uh, scenario, different story. So we have 24 monthly fee. That's the base fee. And then we also have um, per minute. So we can say that this is the slope of 13 per minute. So we have y equals 0 0.13. I'll put t for minutes plus $24. And I, for some reason, I wrote 25. Um, so now... We can solve how many minutes it must have been. So $69.50 equals 0 0.13t plus 24. And we can solve for um, we can solve for the t. And it looks like t is going to equal um, 350 minutes. Okay, so we're going to put m i n there for minutes so i think it's going to be 350 minutes again i just subtract 24 on both sides and divide it by that 0.13 okay um now i th think we'll have time for this example as well kurt hired a face painter for a party and the painter painter charged a flat fee of 80 dollars and then charged two dollars and fifty cents per person in the end kurt paid a total of 132 dollars and fifty cents how many people used the service? Okay. Um, so for this one, I think the flat fee, the base fee, is $80. And the slope would be $2.50. So it seems like we could set up a line of y equals $2.50 times, uh, I guess x would be better now, plus $80. And then we can see how many people actually did it because we know how much the Kurt was charged, $2.50 plus 80, okay? Now we can subtract 80 on both sides. It looks like it's going to be 52.50 equals 2.5x. Divide both sides by 2.5, and we get 21 people use the service, okay? Um, we have one last question here. I don't know if I can do it in... Um, 30 seconds, but um, we can say that with $75 in the piggy bank, we can subtract 34.15. We're going to get 40.85 over the $2.15 per card coming to $19. Again, we have $75 in the total of Pokemon cards, which cost $2.15. Uh, she plans to save $34.15. So we subtract that, and then we divide the difference by how many Pokemon cards, and that gives us the total of 19 Pokemon.